So far in the Gospel of Mark that we've been listening to this year, we've seen and discovered the person of Jesus. He's demonstrated that he is a man with authority. He's taught, unlike the scribes and the Pharisees, he teaches with this personal authority founded in his relationship with God, who he calls the Father. He demonstrates that he has authority even over the sick, over the demon-possessed, even over nature. Just the previous chapter, there is the description of him able to to bring uh, calm to this stormy sea when the, the disciples are there in the boat. So the question swirling around is, who is this? The first eight chapters, that's this powerful underlying theme in Mark. Who is he? And we discover that most places attempted to answer that. They would make those declarations about who Jesus is. But where was the one place that they wouldn't listen to him? Their hearts were so closed, they weren't open to discovering who Jesus was. Last week, where did Jesus go? To Nazareth, to his hometown. And so there he was amazed at their lack of faith because they held him in this one particular category. They weren't able to to open themselves, to, to blow their minds, to expand their categories. They said, no, he's like this and he can't be anything else. And Jesus is always calling us and challenging us to go beyond those little categories to say, how about we look at it from this way, from this point of view. And after his experience there in Nazareth, Mark tells us that he went about among the villages teaching. Because this is the kind of thing that he normally did. That was what we've seen. It's the characteristic movement of Jesus. So many times in these first six chapters in Mark, we hear that phrase of Jesus going from village to village. And what's he doing? What's the number one thing that Jesus will announce? What's the main message that Jesus will bring? Yeah, it's good to see you're good Catholics. <laughs> if you opened your Bibles and turned to me with that, no, um, it would be good to bring Bibles with you or have them on your phones and, and open them. But the kingdom of God, this is what he announces, this is the, the declaration that he makes, that the kingdom of God is at hand across the, all of the Gospels. This is the thing you hear Jesus talking about above all else. Almost every page of the Gospels, you'll see some mention to the breaking in of the kingdom, to turn away from sins because the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is, is hidden. The kingdom of God is uh, this powerful experience. And Jesus wants us to be aware of the power of the kingdom as he goes from place to place. And he summons now the 12. Are they ready? Are they worthy? No. They're still confused. They're still asking this question of, of who is he? And yet he's not calling them because they're more qualified. He's not calling them because they're more talented than anybody else. But he will call those that he, he will call anyone, really, in order to be able to make them worthy. It's the call that makes them worthy. It's in that invitation. It's the sending forth of people who aren't qualified, who aren't ready, who aren't holier than anybody else. And yet he will make them in order to prepare them for this. And in, so often it's in doing the work that we discover our own capacities and, of course, our own limitations. But he calls those in order that they will be able to make those declarations and to go and to share that message. And above all, Jesus, in the instructions that he gives, will invite us just to travel simply. You know, don't get too encumbered. Don't get caught up with all of the extra things that we so often uh, get distracted by along the way. He's inviting us simply to, in our freedom, just to announce him. This is all about that. So travel simply, stay simply, is this message that can continue to be this call to the church. 
And so often we make the whole thing so much more complicated than it needs to be. Because in the end, this is simply all about Jesus. This is all about being like Jesus, of inviting us to, to, to get out of the road so that Jesus can be the one that is announced. Jesus can be the one that is proclaimed. Is it easy to announce the name of Jesus? Well, in some ways, yes, we can take the name of Jesus on our lips quite easily. But Jesus wants us to be authentic in that. And that's so often where we as the Christian church get it wrong, where we muck this up uh, so badly in our hypocrisy and in our infighting and in our lack of just being nice to each other, that we speak one thing and then we live this other reality. And so Jesus wants us to, to announce this gift, but he also wants us to be people who receive this message ourselves. And so whether that's uh, in our humility and in coming to be formed as part of an alpha group or experiencing the new life of community that is available to us in a connect group, it's this call to experience this love and this desire and to be changed slowly, to be people that know that there is no other name by which we can be saved except the name of Jesus and to allow that good news to form us and to shape all that we are, so that we can begin to quite simply and quite easily begin to, to share that good news with others. Will people call us hypocrites? Probably, because that's what we are, because we struggle to, to live with that authenticity. So many surveys indicate that people still love the person of Jesus, because he's so awesome, so amazing. Of course, he's lovable. But the problem that people have with Christianity is us, is Christians who, who don't live the, the good news, who don't live with that authenticity. And yet we still go on. We can't uh, allow that to defeat us. We can't allow that to say, well, we don't need to do, to do this. And especially as, as Catholics, where we so often settle for this false idea of saying, well, it's just in the actions that we do, that will speak loudly enough about Jesus. And yet scripture says, for example, in Romans 10, the faith comes by hearing. It's only when we hear the invitation of Jesus ourselves that we begin to respond, that we're able to respond. And so we need to ask Christians, as Catholics, to take that name upon our lips and to speak it into the public situation, to share our own stories of faith and grace. And we'll be doing something you know, later in the year in preparing us on to how to share our testimony, how to, to be formed and, and shaped by that, and to allow Jesus to call us, to allow Jesus to equip us with everything that is necessary in order to speak his name and to make a difference within our local society. Will we get it right all the time? Probably not. But we continue to strive to this. We continue to try for this to be an authentic sign in the world of the wonder of his love, to be people who are shaped by that and desire to live that within our local communities.